So you just got your Canon DSLR and you want to know the best tips on how to get the best focus with your camera and lens? Stay tuned. Here at Digital Gojo, we get a ton of questions regarding autofocus and your digital SLR camera from Canon. Uh, autofocus is one of the features that is the most complex of your digital SLR camera. Uh, it's something that happens in a fraction of a second. Now, Canon has come a long way with the autofocus system with the introduction of cross-type AF in the 1980s. Uh, take that now to 2018, and almost all the cameras feature dual pixel AF. Now this made the focusing system a lot faster, quieter, more precise, especially when shooting in the live view. But it takes a matter of knowing the basics on how everything works together. So without further ado, let's get to your frequently asked questions. What are some of the best practices for achieving a sharp and focused image? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the diopter on the optical viewfinder is set appropriately. Now, if it's not set appropriately, it's gonna appear out of focus even if you do get a focused image. Now, to set it, you're gonna remove the lens, you press the shutter halfway down, and you rotate the dial until the information in the viewfinder appears sharp. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your lens or filter is free from any smudges or dirt. Next, if your lens has an AF-MF switch, make sure the switch is on autofocus. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you press the shutter release halfway down, make sure the focusing point is hitting the target that you want it to. If you're using a zoom lens, why does the lens stop focusing at certain focal lengths? There could be a variety of reasons why the lens stops focusing at certain focal lengths. Um, you wanna make sure you check the lens's closest subject focusing distance. Now, if you're working with a zoom lens, uh, there could be different focusing distance that you can be at. So if you're at the wide angle lens, it could be one focusing distance. And if you're at the long end, uh, it could be another focusing distance. So if it's not focusing, you might want to step a little bit farther back from your subject matter and see if it focuses and, a, and it gets a sharp image. Also, entry level zoom lenses don't have a fixed aperture and typically uh, restrict the amount of light when you zoom in. That's gonna affect the way the camera is able to focus at the telephoto end. So if you're working with something like the 70 to 300 millimeter zoom lens and you're working in subdued lighting, there's also low contrast, it might be a little bit difficult for the lens to focus. So what you wanna try to do is find something in the frame that's close to the subject matter uh, that has a sharp edge or has some contrast, focus on that and recompose the image. Also, you want to make sure that when you're using a telephoto lens, since there's a narrow field of view, make sure to have the focusing point on your subject matter. You have the correct AF mode, the tracking mode. And also keep in mind with the narrow field of view, uh, if there is a subject matter that comes into frame that's closer than the subject, your lens might focus on that uh, rather than the subject matter that you're looking at. Also, an, an easier trick to, to track a subject is to kind of zoom out a little bit work with the subject matter, and then zoom back in and focus on the subject matter that you need. Uh, and that's how you correct some of the issues if your lens isn't focusing at certain focal lengths. Is it normal for the autofocus to struggle when you have a filter in front of the lens? Typically, you shouldn't have any autofocus issues when using filters, but what you want to do is make sure there's no oil, dust, or dirt, or smudges on the filter itself. If there is, you want to clean it off uh, before adding it to your lens. Also, you want to make sure if you're using a circular polarizing filter or an ND filter, uh, those filters are going to restrict the amount of light that passes through the lens. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that there's enough available light for your camera to focus. If you need to focus, what you can do with an ND filter, uh, you can take the filter off, focus, and then attach the filter on, making sure that you lock the focus in before you uh, press the shutter button halfway down again. Uh, but again, you shouldn't have any issues focusing with the filter. Uh, if you do, just make sure that the lens is clean and you'll be good to go. Can you explain Canon's three different autofocusing modes? One shot, AI focus, and AI servo. Canon offers three different autofocusing modes. You have one shot AF, you have AI focus, and you have AI servo mode. One shot AF is best suited for shooting still subject matter. This is gonna be a mode where you halfway depress the shutter release. It's gonna focus, it's gonna give you an audible confirmation. And when you push it all the way down, it's gonna take the photo. Now in one shot, uh, the camera won't release the shutter until it's acquired focus. 
Next, we have AI servo mode. This mode is gonna allow the camera to continuously track moving subject matter. Now, when you halfway press the shutter, the lens is gonna continually focus and the shutter will release whether or not the camera has acquired focus. Now, this mode is great for shooting sports, wildlife, or any type of action. Now, if you're not sure how to set up this in your camera, you can easily change the mode dial to the sports mode. And last, we have AI focus. Now, this mode is allowing the camera to determine whether or not the subject matter in the frame is moving or not. So it will switch between one shot focus and AI servo. My recommendation would be to choose either between AI servo or one shot focus. I still wouldn't recommend relying on the camera to determine whether or not the subject matter is moving in the frame. So to get the results that you're looking for, make sure to select the proper AF mode. Now to access the AF modes, you simply turn the mode dial on the camera to the creative modes, which would be the M, A, V, T, V, and P. Uh, once you're in those modes, you can hit the Q button on the current Canon cameras. That's gonna bring up the autofocusing modes, and you can select between AI focus, AI servo, and one-shot autofocus. How does the autofocus differ when using live view? So if you're working with any of the current cameras from Canon, like the SL2, 77D, T7i, 80D, uh, those cameras are gonna feature dual pixel AF. Now using the live view autofocus is gonna be very similar to that of using the viewfinder. Uh, whereas in the past, uh, focusing using live view was a lot slower. Now it's up to the speed and you even have some benefits, which I'm gonna to touch on just in a moment. If you have an older Rebel series camera, like an XS, XTi, T6i, those cameras won't feature dual pixel AF. I would recommend using the viewfinder for tracking subject matter and for critical focus. Now using live view has some benefits as I mentioned. Uh, you're able to magnify the image about 10 times for, for critical focus or fine tuning your autofocus. Um, you also have the ability to touch focus uh, so you can quickly touch the area that you want in focus. Um, which is very helpful when shooting video as well as stills. For video shooters, you're gonna be able to pull focus in a way where if you can tap on a subject matter that you want to focus and then quickly move to the next subject matter that you want to focus as well. Can you explain Canon's autofocus area options? Cameras nowadays have very sophisticated autofocusing modes and it's important to make sure your autofocus zones are set appropriately. Now on Canon, there are four different modes. You have single point AF selection, which is a manual selection. So if you have a camera like the T7i, you have 45 different autofocusing points you can manually select from. Now there's zone AF, and in the Canon T7i and cameras like it, you have nine autofocusing points that are gonna be grouped together, and you have nine different zones that you can manually choose from. Now this is a great mode to choose for moving and tracking subject matter. Uh, remember, it's gonna prioritize subject matter that's closer to the camera, so just keep an eye on that. Then you have your wide zone AF. Uh, this mode is gonna have three different zones to choose from, from left, right, and center. Now this is gonna use a wider or broader selection of AF points. Again, this mode is recommended for use with moving subject matter that's moving erratically. Um, next, you have your automatic zone selection. Now, this is gonna choose from all the autofocusing points, but the camera is gonna choose itself, again, prioritizing the nearest subject priority. Uh, so you're gonna wanna make sure that when you're using any of these modes where it's either zone for tracking or uh, the automatic zone that it's actually acquired on the subject matter that you determined is necessary to be sharp. As I mentioned, autofocus could be very tricky and complex, but Hopefully we've answered some of your questions so you can get those sharp images you've been looking for. Uh, remember if this video helped you out, hit that like button underneath, subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. If you have any other questions regarding autofocus, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, and if you're in the Miami area, come by, say hello at the Digital Gojo showroom. Adam here, keep on shooting. I'll catch you in the next video.